I've been made aware that you are catching up to me. So here I am, making some more. And I have a confession with which I would like to start. I actually never have used the create tributary mechanic as much as I've used it here. Okay, you are trying to vassalize you. All right. Let's see who we can. <laughs> no, no, no. We did my retinue go though. This is not great. Our retinues are gone. Did I put them down on accident? Well, this is the opposite of great. Let us rebuild it then. By spending all our prestige. Because that was never my intention. Let's hope it wasn't some bug that is responsible for this. Because that would be fairly uncool. Oh, looky here. A granddaughter. Let's check what we can do with her. Oh, she's strong. She's a strong one. She needs to stay in uh, the line of succession. So there's some Lombard, Welsh, Frankish. There's someone from Anglo-Saxony. Let's see if there's someone who's strong, maybe. Oh yeah, one guy. He's a Frankish child. Doesn't really matter. Let's let's see if we can't create some strong heirs here in this world of ours. Well, not heirs necessarily, but children. All daughters. Man. Let's look at our succession here. <laughs> All our granddaughters. Right there. This is really cool. I haven't seen something like this in a while. Right, so no pact was created from this. That's fine. Just want to see if we can't have some strong people in our dynasty. I think our beard just changed, but I'm not sure. Oh! Our other son has reached age, so we shall appoint him the successor to one of our bishops. Let's see, who's the oldest? 58, so... You, my son. Not my half-brother. He's the guy who's gonna inherit something. So he's pretty decent, actually. But we don't want to fight him. He's too good for that. So let's have him be a bishop and as you can see nothing happening anymore we could press some claims but we can't really press them for ourselves so none of these make sense and we are just going to really ignore them okay one person in our council doesn't have anything to do it's him and I'm not sure why Let's send him spy again, I suppose. Maybe he can find some technology after a while. But our line of succession is pretty decently secured. Let's hope she doesn't get pregnant anymore. But she's 44, so chances are quite slim. All right. Someone died, but their heir has become our tributary as well. It is this guy. Oh, looky here. I have a grandson who shouldn't be eligible, but we'll check in a second if he's eligible for succession. Let's have him be a diplomat. 
Because I'm still fairly hopeful that there's going to be someone sensible coming along. Let's have some more... Uh, a quick Frankish... Let's see if he's in succession, actually. Now he's nowhere near succession, so we don't really need to bother with giving him anything that's going to be good. So we can just go with something that's good for the realm and a alliance with Mercia, which by now I absolutely should know where it is. It's over here. Uh, feels like a good thing, especially since she's slow and ugly, so she needs a good, strong Irishman to help her out here. And that will result in a new alliance. Oh. We're having some trouble with one of our, your, your petty nobles who is visiting Glizvizing. Glizvizing. His behavior being unacceptable would be quite an understatement and I will have to take action soon. So we have a lot of diplomacy so we, we are allowed to go ahead and try to solve this without risking our alliance or setting anyone. That's nice. There's our proposal, so let's have an alliance, shall we? And there's another one. It wasn't with Mercia, I just realized, but that's fine. Oh! Start of the Viking Age, we have reached the year 800. The centralization of power in Scandinavia, which has happened mainly through Denmark being quite dominant. I think this happens once a uh, empire in Scandinavia has been created, which it looks like it has been. Oh, are you an empire? No, just a kingdom. Anyhow, the centralization of power in Scandinavia along with a rapid population expansion has begun to drive its denizens to look beyond their home shores in earnest. New developments in shipbuilding, an adventurous spirit and fearless belief in gods are now taking Norse seafarers across the seas towards distant lands. They arrive as traders, raiders and conquerors. They all kill themselves Vikings. From the fury of the Northmen deliver us. So now come the Scandinavians. The Germanic tribes up here. To come take our, our stuff. So, alright, um, some construction work is being done in our county, which increases the prosperity slightly. Thank you, son. Well done, well done indeed. And we're still working toward spending as much as we can at home. It's a little bit hampered because we now have little prestige left, okay. Someone is trying to kill my wife, which I believe still is me. If I'm not entirely... Yep, yeah, yeah, this. No, we're trying to kill the chief, not our wife. Well, it's okay. We don't really need her. She has done her duty. I really want to take care of this guy. Petty Queen of Mead. I don't like this. It's 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 too strong for my taste. I mean we, we don't have to hide either, but this I don't like. I'll we'll have to ensure that once we're dead all the tributaries are recreated. We could actually because I don't know exactly what happens, if we release this guy as a tributary, I wonder if we are allowed to wage war against him immediately, or if there's a truce then. <sighs> okay, someone is stirring trouble with us now. So let's write a complaint. Our Umarheim prospers, which is nice. You can see this over here, what it does, prospering. Give some modifiers. Alright, instead of something going awry, our relationships have improved. So, I want to see what happens if we release a tributary. 
So let's do it. Okay, we lose 200 prestige. Yeah, no, not that, not, not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. An alliance between us and this guy has broken down. Because there's no marriage ties anymore. Oh well. Shame. One of our acquaintances has died. We will live with that. And hope for our son to become a good bishop. Right, do we have anyone we would like to be our friend still? This guy, actually. He's not our friend. Let's invite him carousing. And hope he comes. Let's see what laws we could change. Could increase the tribal organization. Ah, he comes. Great. So maybe he becomes our friend. We're not unreformed pagans, so the tribal vassal opinion doesn't really hurt us all that much. Everyone is for it because it gives our council even more power. Which is fine by me. Let's have them all the power. Those are mainly actions I'm not using as much. So we don't mind giving up these powers. They already control the most interesting things, which is war, title and revocation and granting. There we go. It was approved. So soon we will be allowed to have maximum tribal and we're on our way to becoming a feudal lord. Let's start our carousing and hope we make one more friend here. Which would be really, really cool. Because that's a content court if I've ever seen one. Lovely! And thus we become close friends. There we go. Now we just need to take care of this guy. Perfect. That, that worked out really great. Okay, let's invite the heir of him to carouse next. So we can be friends before he even steps up to rule. And he will be dead rather sooner than later. Right. Our son has become a bishop since the previous bishop has passed. We should probably make friends with him as well. And a non-aggression pact, because why not? And give him a council position, maybe. Well, no, but we could put our, f our good friend here. Which isn't the worst, to have the court consist of loyalists who will vote in my direction, regardless of where I want to go. The others have their own opinions on what they might vote on, but that's okay. There are some more options which I rarely ever use, but again, this game offers you a huge amount of tools, all at your disposal. It's really just your, your choice what you're going to do with them. So don't fret. Read what they do and experiment a little bit. Very few things in this game can just kill you outright. And the things that can are more or less clearly marked. <laughs> right, okay, we're well equipped up here. Ooh, we have a We have a claim now. Which costs us some gold and prestige. We'll take that claim. And we'll move over here, producing more claims. We cannot declare war. Because she is still our tributary. Which is a little bit of a shame because this will not be inherited. And we have a weak claim on the chiefdom of Osraj. Hmm. 
Well, okay, next time we're going to be a little bit more careful with who we have be our tributaries, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, we could also, by the way, use some of our gold to upgrade things that aren't ours, but are directly influencing what is underneath us. We're not going to spend the gold, because once we re convert to feudalism, we want to build another castle here. Which is going to be quite expensive, and upgrading castles all works through gold. So we're not going to do that. Um, adopt feudalism, let's check where we are. We're almost there. We just need absolute tribal, and then we're done. Then we can become a feudal lord. Which changes a little bit on how our military works. So, right now, all our vassals can be called to war. So these two guys. But they have a choice. They can come or they can't. That doesn't matter. They, they really have their own opinion on it. So you can't rely on them. However, when they come, they come with full force. So they send all their armies they have. When they don't come, they come with nothing. <laughs> now, as a feudal lord, I think tribes kind of still work the same. So these, unless they become feudal as well, will remain as they are in how they function. However, our vassals that are feudal are going to be forced to send a contingent which is under my con direct control. So they don't join as allies, but as troops I have full control over. It's less than I would have, but it's definitely something worthwhile. So we're doing pretty well on financials, thanks to all our tributaries and the church tax being paid in full. So, here's something I learned from playing this. Meaning this time. Is that... Generally I don't care all that much if I have a large demands. If I have a lot of counties directly under me. I don't... doesn't matter to me all that much now. But seeing how much income you can generate through church taxes... Gives me a different opinion on it because... The more counties I have directly under me, the more churches are going to be my direct vassals. And they are going to do... Provide me with a lot of money. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> Very few troops, but a lot of money. Which is nice. And we like money. We could increase the money by spending some money. But we're not gonna. Recruitment drive has been initiated by our marshal, so we can have more troops. Or rather they replenish quicker, currently. So at this point, he has grown huge. He has grown real big. I don't like this. This is not attractive. Because he can feel like 4,000 troops. So what we should do, probably, is release this tributary. While we still have all these other tributaries around. But we first need some prestige. Prestige is best one through war, so... We're going to get some more tributaries. My daughter-in-law, no, thank you. Um, does he have any allies? Yeah, this guy. We could make him our tributary. Yes. A little kid up here. Let's get something big to be our tributary over here. So now see, he's a feudal lord. So... What army he can send is quite different. He has 820 from his vassals and 1320 from him, his own lands, potentially. Now she, the 2440 you see here, are her own troops, but she can potentially, from her vassals, from her tribal vassals, field another 2200, which is a whole bunch. 
a whole big bunch. So I believe before we've conquered the whole island, uh, we might not want to convert to feudalism. So, because we are going to be at a severe disadvantage in, in terms of troop numbers. Look at all these huge feudal lords. They have so less troops, so much less troops than us. It's ridiculous. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead <laughs> and build us some tributaries. To gain some decent amount of prestige so we can release our largest tributary which is counterintuitive if you think about it but right now we still have a huge amount of troops at our disposable uh, at our disposal and actually we're going to call her into wall uh, into this war because we want her to be weakened and maybe if she declines she breaks the alliance so with all the we're going to use her troops right now to achieve our goals and force her hand to take a stand against us or with us so we're going to have our kid lead the center and oh, no, we're not going to have our kid lead the center we're going to have uh, this guy lead the center and our kid gets to lead something he gets to lead these guys. There you go, boy. Now, if he dies now, looking at the succession here, uh, our granddaughter would be next in line. For whom we should go ahead and find a decent husband who's going to have her lineage. Because if we don't do this, then we're going to lose our throne to potential heirs, which isn't great. Which is not something we want. So we don't need an alliance out of this one. We're going to look for good attributes in the potential mate pool. And there's a genius. We're going to have him. And again, listen to the soundtrack. So we're telling our ally, go hunt the enemy, because they're going to come down around here and try to besiege me. We don't want that. Who are you and why have you arrived at my court? Oh well. See, our ally was going to send her troops to fight stupid wars and win stupid prizes. At least I hope she should be. She's not. Girl, there's a siege happening. Do your job. Or I will have your head. Ah, now she, now she goes. So let's see, who is at war with whom here? Okay, there's a prepared invasion of England going on to which some of our vassals are flocking because they have pacts over here in England. Meaning there's going to be Vikings on these chores. Jewish exile, eh? Oh wow, he's really good. That's true. Not bad, my friend. Can't really do anything with them. Except for make him our court physician. Well, he arrived just in time. <laughs> oh, well, we could actually point him because we don't have any strong vassals in this. So we're gonna. We're going to have everything be done here. Perfect. 
So let's generate a few more claims down here while we're at it. So the enemy army was beaten. Of course it comes back. And they walk around as well while we just sit and do nothing apparently. We would like to siege and not sit and do nothing. Let's siege, earn some gold. Ooh. A noble has distinguished himself in this battle. Perhaps I can make use of him. So he's now at my court. He isn't really great. He has a lisp. Which doesn't make him not really great, but it doesn't really have anything great. <laughs> the most notable thing about this man is he has a lisp. Which in itself is not bad, but it also doesn't really distinguish himself really as something useful. 